You're watching March to March, presented by Principal Financial Group. From Gamble Pavilion in stores, seventh rank UConn on Senior Day hosts the Providence Friars. And we welcome you down to the floor. John Sadak alongside former Marist sharpshooter and Julianne Viani. Senior Day, it's just different for these players. It really is. I mean, it's an emotional time anytime you enter a Senior Day. The whole team knows it. They all want to play for the seniors. And I think every senior handles it a little differently. These seniors have been through a little bit more than a lot of seniors over the last few years, which we'll get into to later but I can tell you this it is going to be rocking they sold this place out Don it'll be fun they will start four seniors today and it will be the first start for Paige Beckers since December the 5th she came back from injury Friday limited action against St. John's and looked pretty darn good I mean they are so thrilled to have her back she made her debut Friday as you mentioned after missing games since the fifth and there was just an invigorated buzz surrounding this team having their leader back on the floor bringing that comfort level and she was moving very well looked very comfortable and confident and for Providence they're going to need a lot out of Janae Coons she was unconscious the last time these two teams met and they'll need all of that then some she really steps up in big moments brings out the best in her I mean you've got to look at Janae Coons when you look at Providence your keys brought to you by Daisy Cox well, for the Friars, they've got to slow the tempo. UConn wants to speed them up. They cannot get into a trap meet, and Crooms has to be special once again. And for UConn, speed the game up and get Paige Beckers more involved. They've got to get acclimated to her again on the floor. When these teams met in late January, the Friars put a scare into UConn, played them to an eight-point final. But will UConn full go send the seniors the right way? The juxtaposition of joy and tears, all born out of shared love of team as we join our teammate, Jenny Dell. Yeah, this day belongs to the seniors. It was really emotional down here pregame as we honor those four seniors who have really dealt with so much, yet still, despite all those struggles, have been able to continue the trend of success here. 13 consecutive Final Four appearances. You look at the names, Williams, Westbrook. We have also Nelson, Adado, and Juhas as well, all honored just moments ago. Now, Williams said, we have unfinished business to take care of. What is that unfinished business she's speaking of? Well, Coach Oriyama told me the only thing missing is winning a national championship. But for now, the focus is on celebrating these four in their final appearance at Gamble. Appreciate that, Jenny. And you see the tears flowing even for Gino Oriyama. Here are the starters. Four seniors get the nod for UConn. For Providence, look out for Olivia Olson. The fifth straight start for the freshman head coach Jim Crowley told us that they would go big and would look to Olsen to give them some size to combat UConn. He doesn't want a pure half-court game, but he doesn't want to run up and down either. Yeah, exactly right. And he was able to control the game a little bit in the first matchup where they played a little more half-court, John, and that is what helped them. Of course, it was a different lineup then. UConn has had a lot of injuries, and now they're full force. Watch out. Kristen Williams defending against Janae Crooms, tied her career high with 27 when these teams met late January. Alyssa Geary, nice leave on the block and a foul. Avina Westbrook. And the Tennessee transfer who has shined off the bench. Getting the nod today, an annual tradition for many programs, including UConn. Yeah, a nice job here. Just getting it inside early for Providence. What I do like about this Friars team, John, is their length. That's one thing that they can really hang with UConn in terms of their length. They're a good shot blocking team. And Olsen right to the frame, misses on the first free throw. You know, she was particularly potent off the bench in the first meeting. She finished a team high plus eight at 15 minutes off the bench. She was three of four from the field, but misses both at the line. And everyone here is standing. Everyone in the sold out 10,000 plus building stands on senior day. Westbrook loads, a little short. And the rebound goes to UConn. Dorka Juhas, they played the Hungarian national anthem for her before the game. She could be back next year for the Huskies. Yeah, it was very cool to watch them play that anthem for her. But yeah, I think they are expecting her back, John. Six to shoot. Williams snaps corner. Juhas a little short as well. And the high post rebound to Olsen. Providence has lost three in a row. Eight of ten, ten of thirteen. A number of close calls in that time. Geary nearly had it tripped. 
Olsen against Juhas, denied in line. Crooms has a mismatch against the big over Juhas in and out, rebound Beckers. Curious to see how Crooms is guarded here this time around. Oh, and how did she thread the needle? Kristen Williams unable to finish off the feed from Beckers. The crowd stands until that first bucket goes in. And they're all cheering. They're clapping, waiting for that first basket for UConn. Uh, there's definitely some nerves here, John. It's senior day. All the seniors are out there. Seven to shoot. Crooms into the lane, floats it up. Offensive foul. <laughs> Olivia Nelson Adota takes the charge. That's one situation where you've got to pull up when you're playing against UConn. This is where you've got to pull it short, take a nice little mid range jumper. Otherwise, you go in with the trees. And Adota, who's been tremendous, not only with her defense and positioning, but in her shot blocking too, leads the Big East. You've got to be ready to pull it. There is Nelson Adota, sharp dribble. Williams recovered from elbow surgery on her shooting left arm over the summer. Adota into the double, gets fouled. And they see they're trying to isolate Adota here on the block. And good help defense, but the foul for sure. And Adota does a great job just stepping in. And they want to get her involved early. She missed a few games with that groin injury. has been back in the lineup the last few games and certainly has been helpful for them. And there's the first point of the game and so everyone sits down after Aurora, the foul to Mary Baskerville, thousand point scorer. Those are two big fouls for Providence. So their most accomplished career players each have a foul and UConn has the rebound on the free throw miss. And the clock I think wasn't moving. Shot clock seemed to be frozen. Was the game clock frozen as well? UConn 10 and 1 at home. Huskies have won six in a row, 12 of 13. They have already clinched the one seed and the regular season crown in the Big East. Williams opposite, quick load, three ball off target. Ravina Westbrook out of bounds, and it's UConn the ball. A slow offensive start here for both squads. But UConn's continuing to get possessions here, John. This is, I think, the third in a row. They get a chance to score. You give them that many chances, they're, they're bound to make one. You can feel there's a tightness factor, a little emotional. Kristen Williams hits heel. Good boxing board for Providence. And Gino Oriema told us, you never know. Some teams he thought wouldn't be emotional were vice versa. He told us he did not expect emotion from this team. The long two is true as Twine snaps for Alyssa Geary. And yet tears were flowing freaking. Yeah, we saw it. You don't know until you were there. I mean, for me as a senior, as a player, I was emotional as well. You are focused on the game ahead. You think about postseason coming, but it's your last true home game of the season. There's so much going on in your mind. and. Everybody's so different. Rattles in for Kylie Shepard, one of the many freshmen getting significant time for Providence. UConn is yet to hit a field goal, 0 for 6 from the floor. Providence looks pretty cool, calm, and collected here. Juhas had position, can't handle the pass, went off the foot of Shepard. I like the patience of Providence. They're not trying to play too fast. They're playing with some pace, taking what the defense is giving them. A nice job there with the ball reversal and the shot. And then again, that's a second shot in a row. Just in transition, gets an easy bucket. Nelson Adota, misfire. The box not complete for Providence. The subbed in Lauren Sampson. And another chance for the Huskies. A foul on the catch. That's going to be Baskerville. That is two fouls on the senior who hails from nearby Enfield, Connecticut. That's a problem because Baskerville matches up well with Olivia Nelson Adota, and they're trying to pound it into her. Now she's got to come out of the game, probably for the half. Some coaches will take you out for the whole half, John, after you pick up your second. What would you do? I would. I, I, would, I come from that background, though. My coach would take you out. You were done if you, were, if you had two already. Kevin the Archibald, the freshman, is in. Slicing down the lane, Kristen Williams, the first made field goal for UConn. 
Now keep in mind, the Huskies are coming off the biggest blowout the Big East has seen this year. They routed St. John's on Friday when Beckers returned and played limited action off the bench. Well, the emotion, though, of having her back on the floor with her teammates, I think they were just exploding with excitement. Williams, three ball off. You did see that turnover for Providence. Here's another. That's been a plague for Providence on the year. Adota, oh, the nice spin, bucket and one. And they have really allowed her to establish position early in the paint. And Olivia Nelson Adota, a slight frame, but she is so athletic and she's very strong. Does a good job here absorbing some contact. I didn't see a ton of contact there, but they're getting her the basketball early, and that's big. A foul to Olsen, her first. So Olsen out, Alyssa Geary looks like back in. Nelson Adota converts. Improved free throw shooting dramatically. Was just north of 59% last year. This year it's 70. And now UConn can pressure. And they've got some subs. So they're able to pressure a little bit more than they have throughout the season, John. Where Coach Oriema was playing the guards 40 minutes a game at one point. They had three play all 40 minutes. Crooms hasn't had a ton of touches last few possessions. Extra pass, corner triple. Samson an air ball and a foul as Beckers caught at the weak side and got hit by Alyssa Geary. Uh, number 32, Alyssa Geary. Yeah, I thought it was interesting to your point. Our producer, Deb Bullock, asked Gino Oriema to kind of contrast what it feels like at this stage of the year. As he put it, this is as healthy as they've been all year. They're without Aubrey Griffin, who hasn't played all season, back surgery on January the 10th. But he pointed out that depth you're talking about. He can look to his bench and know, I can bring four or five players off that can have the same impact as the starters. Yeah, I mean, you look at Westbrook. I mean, it's just, it's incredible that you can pull her off the bench at times and, and just get a starter out on the floor. But it, it has been a revolving door for him in terms of finding pieces that fit. And it's there's just been a lot of injuries this season, something he's not used to seeing throughout his career. And one day you get you get these five playing together, and then the next day it's three or out, and you got to rotate that. So can they get some consistency here down the stretch now that they've got everybody back? Becker's out. Daisy Fudd in. She's missed a lot of time this year. Another turnover. Williams, the clean strip, the nice leave. Rejection. What recovery by Geary. Now you see some shot blocking ability for both squads. Swallowed up by a double team. Nelson Adona powers through with a chance for another three point play. And you've got to love the start of this game. UConn up 10 4, but a lot of pounding inside. And Olivia Nelson Adota just dominating the paint. Nine-0 run, UConn up six as we shift our focus to the Friars and their freshman Olivia Olson, the subject of our Reese's Peanut Butter Cups player profile, Jenny. Yeah, let me tell you a little bit more about Olivia. She didn't even start playing basketball until eighth grade, despite her father, James, being a stud player in college. Soccer was her passion growing up, and now that she's fully engulfed in the world of basketball, she tries to model her game after Giannis Antetokounmpo. Olivia being 6'3", she appreciates his athleticism, his length, but also is a huge fan of his humble nature. Something people might not know about her, too. The girl can dunk. Coach Carly told me that she's really coming into her own this season. Yeah, oh man, she is super athletic, runs the floor well. It's crazy to me that no one got her into basketball at a younger age. I mean, 6'3", that's the first thing you do. Throw her the ball. <laughs> or volleyball will fight with the basketball coaches to get her, right? <laughs> well, as Jenny mentioned, her dad, a big-time Division II star at St. Rose, was nationally competitive as Crooms draws a foul. By the way, big foul before the break that had Nelson Adota at the line. It was a second on Alyssa Geary, the only Friar to start every game this year. So Geary and Baskerville, a thousand-point scorer herself, have two. And Crooms, who's by far Providence's best player, has one. And Olsen rejected by Nelson Adota. A lot of fouls here for sure for Providence early. And you see here, Nelson Adota, again, I can't reiterate enough, the best shot blocker probably in the country or one of. I mean, you just can't go straight up 
with her defending. She's just so good at not fouling, but just positioning her body right. Well, she has the most total blocks in the Big East, second in blocks per game. Mary Baskerville of Providence, the leader in blocks per game, but two per. Juhas following the miss. Another and one, and UConn has owned the offensive glass. And Juhas, another one who's just a beast down low. A great job here following her shot. I mean, that's just textbook fundamental basketball. Follow your shot. There's the extra possession. I like it with the finish. And the free throw is there. So second chance points favor UConn. Seven zip. They're already taking advantage of six offensive rebounds to just one of Providence. That's been the problem here for Providence. They, they've got to find bodies. Foul went to Archibald, her first. And foul quickly up her end as Shepard on the drive got hit. So Caroline Ducharme. Top five recruit in the country, two-time Gatorade Player of the Year in her native Massachusetts. Had starred since Beckers got hurt. After Beckers' injury, she's averaged 15 points per game. Coach Oriama told us she's been the biggest surprise for them as a coaching staff. They, they under, underestimated just how good she was going to be. And having her really has been huge this season. She really stepped up. Just the second offensive rebound for Providence and a travel by Shepard. Turnovers come up again. That was an issue for Shepard last time out when they fell to Marquette on their senior night on Friday. And that's something that Coach Crowley said they would have to really be careful with, with turning the ball over because you just literally give possessions and points away to the Huskies, especially if they're live ball turnovers. Nelson Adota. Has been dominant early. Kicks out of the wing. Mule, the rainbow three miss. Tracked down by Nelson Adota. Another offensive rebound for UConn. These long rebounds, or long shots mean long rebounds, and the guards are tracking them down. Ducharme, oh, what the shake. Rim glassing in. It's a 15-0 run for the Huskies. And now Nika Mule fronts the pressure. Gino Oriema has employed 10 different starting lineups this year. As a variety of injuries beyond Beckers had curtailed a lot of their full firepower that is on full display today. High kiss miss for Shepard. And here come the Huskies. Nelson Adota off the up fake. One hand pass to Juhas. Finish. Nice high-low. I mean, that's just really nice post-to-post -post passing right there. I, I just love the way UConn passes the ball every year. I mean, this year is no different. Crooms turns it over. Numbers for the Huskies. Sharing the ball. Transition. AZ FUD. Providence, it feels like in dire need of a timeout. Yeah, big time. They, they need a T.O. here. I mean, this is getting a bit out of hand early. 12 points in the paint to none for Providence. They've got nothing easy down low. It's a 19-0 run. Three subs lie in wait for the Friars. Olsen, end line, help comes. Shepard in and out. And another one and done. Providence needs to stop here to stop the bleeding. Nelson Adota dragging Olsen in the lane, and Olsen got the ball. Nelson Adota thought she got arm. Shepard, excellent defense by Fudd in transition. It was a sluggish start for UConn. Well, they sure did turn it on. I mean, a lot of emotion senior night. You kind of expect that it might be like that in terms of the sluggish start because that's just what's going on. A lot of a different lineups starting, and there's just certainly struggled in the beginning but boy have they picked it up since had to wake up the crowd woke up and they've gotten out and running here scoring in a variety of ways tipped on entry friars maintained Arias scott among the entrance rejected by caroline ducharme and yukon moves the ball up the floor so well yuhas extra pass ducharme in and out rebound alaya edwards just terrific. 
Uh, the, the pass moves quicker than the dribble, and you see that's what the, the Connecticut Huskies do. And all of a sudden, you blink, and they are down at the other end. Edwards last year, the Big East sixth woman of the year, had to become a starter when UHaas battled a stress reaction in her foot. And it started ever since until senior day. Clean pick for Fudd. Edwards is probably one of my favorite post players to watch in the country when she's playing her best. She is just, there's no one better. It's just about getting her more consistent. And she had re-entered the lineup in the first meeting against Providence. That was back on the 30th of January. Friars have been rudderless in the half court. 24 seconds. Gracie Fosa down the grain of the lane, out of bounds. You caught a ball. Now you had asked Jim Crowley for some keys to the game, and he pointed out how different UConn is now than it was in late January. And the first thing he said was make sure you go to church Sunday morning. Yeah, oh yeah, say your prayers. <laughs> he recognizes the fact that a lot of things, you just have to be lucky when you play UConn. Lucky in the sense where either they're not full force for some reason, or you're just having out of your mind, out of body kind of game as a, as a whole. Fudd near the horn, drills it from deep. The heave by Shepard. It is a 24-0 run to close the quarter by UConn. A 25-4 lead. You're watching March to March, presented by Principal Financial Group here on CBS Sports Network. Welcome back to Gamble Pavilion. UConn up 21. Now, Swin Cash and Renee Montgomery are champions in every sense of the way. Cash was a All-American here at UConn, won two titles before going on to win three titles with the WNBA in her 15-year career, while two-time All-American Montgomery won a championship with the undefeated 39-0 UConn women in 2009. Took home two titles in her 11 years in the WNBA. Now, both continue to share and shine as leaders. Cash in 2019 became the first black woman to earn an executive role in the NBA as the vice president of basketball operations and team development for the New Orleans Pelicans. And Montgomery, she opted out of the 2020 WNBA season to focus on social justice reform. She became the co-owner and now also vice president of the Atlanta Dream, making her the first former player to do both for a WNBA franchise. Now, Montgomery was recognized last year by the Basketball Hall of Fame for her humanitarian efforts. Well, Cash was previously honored by the National Civil Rights Museum for her contributions to civil and human rights, guys. Appreciate that, Jenny, and kudos to those Trailblazers. Outstanding representation of women, of sport, and Swain, a former teammate of ours, too, both here at CBS. Right, and yeah. I had a chance to call NCAA tournament games with her on radio as well. Tremendous talent. Yeah, and I got a chance to cover Swin with the New York Liberty throughout her career, and then, and then when she got into coaching or whatever, she's just been everywhere <laughs> in the basketball arena. But watching her play and... Of course, she was with Teaspoon with the New York Liberty. We saw Teresa Weatherspoon in that picture with her, and the two of them both with the Pelicans now, which is very cool. Now the foul here goes to Mary Baskerville. That is her third. She picked up her second at the 6.15 mark in the first quarter. She is right back on the bench with three fouls already. And nine turnovers for Providence. It's really been a tough go here. UConn executes out of bounds plays brilliantly at this time of year too it is all about execution coach Oriama did tell us too that he's had to, had to call more plays this season than he's ever had to call throughout his coaching career because he's had a lot of different lineups like we keep mentioning and this is just terrific job by Edwards executing and they ran it right you can scout all you want, but when the team executes a, a play properly, you sometimes just can't stop it. See, their points in the paint, six teams at basically every major category. It's reflected in the score. It's outright domination. Four to shoot, deep, contested three for Scott. And I think Fudd got a piece of that. There's not a whole lot that Jim Crowley in his sixth year can do. He's had his own challenge, a season loaded with injuries. Played UConn to an eight-point final on the Friars' home floor in the late stage of January. A final that was a little misleading. This is a series UConn has dominated. They have won 30 straight going back to 1993. 
Yeah, UConn, I think their bus broke down on the way to that game. It was like one of those days for them that was just, it just wasn't good. <laughs> the snowstorm was had. Williams from three. And the two benches tell the tale. Providence despondent, all seated. And UConn celebratory often standing and cheering on their teammates. Yeah, they really are. And to get everybody back healthy at this time of year, they could not have asked for better timing where that's concerned. And you can kind of wipe the rest of the season out. John, I mean, this is, this is a new team now. Kylie Shepard snaps Twan. She had been in a shooting funk. Entered one for her last eight from three over the prior three games. It had a, a little bit of a freshman lull, but she's tough. You really can't take her off the floor. Westbrook up top, Williams for three. Yes. And the movement, the ball movement, the next pass. Timeout, Jim Crowley and Providence. It's a demolition on senior day, and the Huskies are rolling. <laughs> the students raced in as soon as the doors opened to grab the best seats and support the seniors, including Kristen Williams. This is the player that Coach Oriama told us has to be great moving forward and in the NCAA tournament. She's that player who he wants to, to, to just elevate her offensive prowess, and she's doing that here today. She's really been doing that as of recent, and she's been very consistent lately, has eight points, three of six from the floor here today, but she's just such a great player. It's good to see her come out strong here on senior day. And for more, let's check in with Jenny. Yeah, I was in the huddle with Coach Crowley, and he said, we don't have five people working hard defensively. We need to turn up our defensive level as a group. We need to get stops, and the focus is really just making sure that they're keeping their own tempo, guys. Appreciate that kindly, and Jim Crowley in Providence looking for any kind of reprisal, but it is a Herculean effort. AZ Fudd said after the win against Tennessee, she predicted it's going to be really scary. When everyone is healthy, we're going to be a nasty team. So after <laughs> Becker's return on Friday, Kristen Williams was asked, are you nasty yet? And she said, no, not yet. Becker's her first game back. She hasn't started. She's still getting lengthened out, but we're getting there. And you can tell that this is a team that's playing with a purpose, that has its eyes on something much bigger than even a conference crown, and they believe they now have the pieces in place. Absolutely. And Coach Orima told us that. Well, listen, Every team is going to get better from November till you, you reach March, right? Everyone's going to get better, but no one's going to get as great as UConn can suddenly become, right? They get the player of the year back on their team. You might add some other pieces on other teams across the country, but they get the national player of the year, as we see her almost score there. Uh, so they can change significantly more than other teams across the country. We asked Gina Oriyama, would there be a minutes restriction as Beckers gets the tie up and forces a jump ball, Providence ball. And Gino told us he didn't know at the time. The limit was 15 on Friday. She played 12. And Gino Oriyama joked after the game that Beckers approached him and said, you owe me three minutes. You owe me three more minutes. He told us today he expected at least 15, but was going to let you know her body and, and her voice tell him what she can and can't do. Yeah, and he's been saying that all along. Listen. Players know when they're ready to come back. And I actually didn't think she'd come back as quick as she ended up doing. We were here last weekend when they played Georgetown, and I didn't get the feeling she'd be back this quick. Archibald, off iron, UConn ball. And Beckers had told Gina Oriana, I'm either coming back the game before senior day or after senior day. She did not want to come back on senior day and steal the spotlight from the veteran players. And that says a lot right there. It just tells you what kind of person she is. She knows how special senior day is for the seniors. Westbrook off fire and rebound to Gracie Fosa. Shepard in transition. And Fosa down the lane, help comes, rejected by Edwards. Oh, Becker sees the floor so well. That threaded the needle to Kristen Williams. Touchdown, UConn. One of the ways, one of the many ways that Beckers affects the game without scoring. And maybe Jim Mora can look elsewhere on campus That's as he right. <laughs> That's right. fills up the football roster. Touchdown, Jesus. <laughs> 
Crooms, who's only had one shot try. She's turned it over three times. That's what UConn's done to her today. Audrey Cook, three to shoot. Ifoso with one on the timer. Off iron, great boxing board for UConn, and AZ foot. Westbrook, Edwards wanted it. UConn at one point had a 29-0 run. Oh, but no luck. Williams from Beckers. Yes! You saw Paige Beckers there was going to come off that pick and roll, and you, you really would have thought she was going to throw that into the post, and she just zips it out to the perimeter. Williams ready on the catch. Just terrific passing. Beckers' mom, Amy, had tears as she filmed the senior day moments. The entire team was arm in arm with tears flowing. Becker's overplay. Coombs able to slip by, but misses point blank. Three subs lying away for the Friars. Juhas for the Huskies. Williams is feeling it. It's heel. Weak side Edwards. Double comes. Slips right past it. And one. Another second chance opportunity. And UConn is just dominating. And Paige Beckers with a beautiful pass to Williams in transition. I mean, this is just perfect placement, quarterback type of passing. And then this shot, I mean, these, this is a duo. Is this a duel or what? I mean, these two certainly know where each other are on the floor. And they play so well together. Well, Edwards subs out after hitting the end one. And Nelson Adota back in. You wonder for Gino Oriem, a Big East tournament looms at Mohegan Sun, how he's going to define his rotation with Beckers now starting. And you got to think the starting lineup will have a bit of a different look when they begin conference tournament play. Yeah, I think that's what all of this time is right here, the last couple of games, and why it's good he got Beckers back when he did. Good back door cut by Shepard. And what is that like to get such big pieces back but in staggered time during the year? I think it's hard. I think it's hard on the players because you kind of get into a rhythm. You can't get into a rhythm. I think that's what's hard. But when we asked him about getting Paige back specifically, it's different with her because she's not one of those ball-dominant players, right? She doesn't have to be a high-volume shooter to affect the game. So he did not think that it would that, that it would affect the players at all getting her back in terms of, of just fitting in. I mean, it's pretty seamless when you think about it with Paige. Foul to Naraya Scott, her first. So Yuha shoots a couple. And converts. Get ready for a bull riding mow down. PBR Unleash the Beast heads to Little Rock tonight, 8 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Little Rock, Arkansas, the hometown of Kristen Williams. Yuhas converts on both of them. A 43 to 9 lopsided score. Gino Oriema said of uh, Dorka Yuhas, two time first team All Big Ten at Ohio State, that he is operating under the assumption that she will be back. Shepard Short. But she elected and wanted to participate in the senior day ceremonies today. And that's understandable. I mean, it's, it's, it's the people she came in with and. Go to school with classes with it, it makes sense. Crooms. Eerily silent, only two shot tries, no points today. Defended by Williams. Well, you kind of had a feeling that might happen <laughs> after last game that these two teams faced, and she went off. She was very efficient from the floor, dropped 27. You know, Coach Ariama was going to make a change there. A foul to Kristen Williams. Oh, easy Fudd subs away. Ducharme is back. Foul to Williams, her second. So Crooms at the line looking for her first point of the game. She erupted to tie her career high with 27 of the first meeting. Young lady who had her college career take her to both Ohio State and Michigan State, a part time starter, productive player at both spots. But hails from Cranston, Rhode Island. Went to prep school just about 20 minutes away from Alumni Hall, where the Friars women's team plays most of its home games. And she realized what was important to her. She wanted to be close to home, and she's kind of getting the best of, of both worlds, the college experience plus being close to home. And, I mean, I get that. 
I played at a school that wasn't far from home either, but you know, she has had a heck of a year. This has become her team. Foul to Olsen, her second. Lauren Sampson back in. A teaching moment for Naraya Scott. Free throw miss. Coming up, AT&T at the half. Sherry Burr, Sarah Kustak will get you caught up on all the action. Couple of top 25 tilts, including Notre Dame Louisville. Plus first half stats, highlights, AT&T at the half. A free throw misses. And a foul. Davina Westbrook will suffer her second. You know, Westbrook coming off left knee surgery. Gina Oriema said that since she went to the bench, she really bought into her role, understood what her role is. She did not have a field goal try and had 10 assists Friday against St. John's. It really is pretty impressive. He said that she's playing the best of her career right now. And she can see a lot of players can really see the game better when they sit on the bench to start the game. They come in, John, and then they kind of can, can assess. And that's good. And she's better. And it's not easy to be a spark plug. Here is Westbrook, right down the lane, bucket, and she can score. Wednesday against Marquette, when they put a bow on the regular season title in the one seed for the Big East tournament, she had 17 off the bench to lead the game. She has been terrific. The fans actually voted her MVP of the team this year. Juhas, what a rejection. Olsen forced into a bad look by Nelson Adota. Nelson Nadota against Olsen, spinning, basket, post-domination by the Huskies. She just makes it look so easy. She's smooth, and her step through is so long. I mean, she takes one step, and she's all the way at the other side of the rim. Three ball off target. Friars have only hit four field goals in the game. In and out for Westbrook, rebound Nelson Nadota. Gets in line, muscles in, chippy bucket. She's got 11, joining Williams in double figures. It's a 19-3 run. Providence has missed on 10 of its last 11 from the field. Now they've just been deflated completely. How can they get better looks? I mean, they've got to get into attack mode, and I know Coach I know Coach Crowley told us before the game that the pace of this game was going to be a big deal. And you say that anyone that plays UConn says that. It's got to be a little bit of a slower game. You've got to attack their chests. And that's another thing that's important. And they haven't done that. And they turned it over a little too much, giving opportunities away. Juhas, three ball off. So you say that. He had talked about attacking the chest versus the shoulder. What does that mean? How do you execute that? Uh, I think when you attack the chest, you just you go at the player from the front position rather than the side. Because when you go the sideways, I, I think that UConn is so good at rotating and, and other players stepping in and blocking shots, it, it makes it more difficult. So if you attack the chest, that's what was successful for Crooms in the first meeting. She didn't shy away at all. That's a third foul on Alyssa Geary. So Geary's got three. Baskerville has three. Olsen is two. Archibald is two. Crooms has one. Both foul and point. And this is about as lopsided as you could have expected. Running shot off for Westbrook under a minute. The Friars need to get it across. UConn gambled a bit. Crooms. Forced the bounce pass, grain of the lane. Nelson Odota picks it off. There's too many forced errors. UConn has not scored 100 this year. The Huskies are well on their way. Uh, I mean, at this point, you get demoralized if you're Providence. You just want to compete. Timer off, you hold for a shot. Yeah, you take, you just take the last shot. I mean, that's just, you still have to play basketball the way that you should. Nine seconds. Olsen trying to up fake. Everybody stays vertical. UConn ball and a sportsmanlike move. UConn won't even attempt a heave. Satisfied with a 51 to 10 route in progress.
on senior day. It went from a slow start, loaded with tears, to unbridled joy and greatness. It's March to March, presented by Principal Financial Group on CBS Sports Network. AT&T at the half is next. UConn closed the first half on a 21-3 run and owns a convincing 51-10 lead at the break. Welcome back down to the floor. John Sadak and the former Maris great and Julianne Viani. What stood out to you in that first half? Well, from the start of this game, it was UConn. I mean, they just dominated. I just think they didn't even give Providence a chance to even think that they could stay in this game. And you've got to really love that because it is senior day and you can just see the extra passion, the extra emotion that they're playing. Playing with it and they played terrific I mean you can't say enough about UConn right now these are the numbers what stands out to you very lopsided 11 turnovers for Providence clearly we highlighted that and the rebounding battle is definitely all UConn UConn shooting well from the perimeter and Providence just I think Providence has 10 points I mean enough said they can't score and you've got to love the way that UConn has played in, in every sense of the word. Time now for a play that's definitely worth a watch presented by Principal Financial Group. Uh, Paige Beckers has a few assists in the limited minutes she's played. She's played eight minutes here, but she makes her minutes count. She's got three assists right now, just two points, but they're easing her way back in. And this is what you want if you're Coach Orium. The last couple of games have been easier battles for them, which I think is good for Paige because she's just getting her feet back wet after not playing for two months. So that's I think that's good for them. Eight minutes played so far for Becker. So perhaps you could be looking at that 15 total for Jim Crowley and Providence. What do you say to your team at halftime at a game like this? Compete. I just want to see you guys compete. And they almost look like they're starstruck from the start of this battle where it was just like, oh, boy, we're here. The place is sold out. And we're just getting crushed. We're not, they're not even competing. So if I'm Coach Crowley, I want to see them compete. I want to see them play with no fear, attack mode. You just got to play better than this. Different five for UConn than start of the game on this senior day. Nelson Adota, Edwards, one of the changes along with Easy Fudd. Elbow J on the way, hits heel, tip ball, UConn ball. I mean, even things like that. Go after the rebound, you've got to just continue to play hard. Could this be the five the Huskies begin a game with in the Big East tournament? Very well could be. I mean, I, can, I, think, I think that it's the five that he feels very comfortable with right now. Out of bounds. Starting with. No Beckers out there, part of it. You see her on the bench as we check in with Jenny. Yeah, I spoke with both coaches. We'll start with Gino first. He said, you know, he thought the girls were playing with a little bit of emotion with it being senior day to start it off. But once they got a lineup that everyone was comfortable with, you look at the lineup out here now, then everything settled in and it all clicked. I asked if there were any changes in the second half, and Coach just kind of smiled at me. Now for Coach Crowley, he said, we need to compete at a higher level. Exactly what you guys were saying. He said, they're unsure offensively, and they're playing sideways right now. So he said, we need to break down the second half into four to five minute increments and just focus on that guys yeah, he said sideways see we're talking about going towards the chest right he doesn't want the shoulders and that's been happening you play side to side rather than going forward move forward towards the rim now, we had spoken some off air before coming back and Jules you had talked about compartmentalizing the game at this stage just as coach Crowley had relayed to Jenny playing increments two minute increments at this point Edwards off target, Nelson Adota, sharp dribble, hesitation, up fake, and one. She has been brilliant down low. She really has. I mean, no matter where she is on the floor, I mean, see, there's no one even boxing her out. She's just walking in, and there's no one putting a body on her. So she's bound to shine in a game like this. Just a tremendous effort. UConn is winning every single effort battle out there. Now that foul is a big one. That's number four on Mary Baskerville, Connecticut native, 1,000-point scorer, who's battled a barrage of injury herself. Now what do you do if you're Jim Crowley? She's got four fouls, and you're in the infancy of the second half. Oh, no. And Kylie Shepard is wincing in pain, slow to get up. Her teammates help her. Visibly hobbled. There's Shepard left in the lane, tumbling down after she tried to help Olsen against Edwards for the free ball. Uh, it looked like 
could be anything. The, the leg area, ankle, I don't know. Just a funny fall. Now, she missed nine of the first 11 games this year due to injury, then got hurt at the end of Seton Hall, was out for St. John's earlier this week. Jim Crowley said upon her return a few days ago, she defended well but had some rust, was a little off. But they were confident that she'd get through the rust and she just started to really get her rhythm back, so it's unfortunate to see her go down here with an injury. She had seven of Providence's 10 in the first half. Grooms, their leading scorer, looping in line. Three ball, Geary, short. And here comes Edwards. Flanked by Friars, one on three. They're trying to get too fancy. She could have gone straight in and probably had a layup. Turns it over there on steps. A bit of a sluggish start for UConn to the second. Not, not quite as ugly, honestly, as the start of the game, but a little disjointed. And you think about the score. And do you blame them? You know, I mean, it's not easy to stay up the way they stayed up that first half. But that's the key with UConn. And over the years, what's been special about them, John, is the fact that they do keep their foot on the gas no matter who their opponent is. That's what separates them from other good teams in the country. Second switch on Crooms, and then she coughs it up. She sloughed off Williams, she lost Fudd, and then turns it over. Forced bounce pass back door, stolen away by Geary. Olsen trying to set up shop, loops to the right corner. Cook against Williams, who's been excellent defensively, up and under miss, and Williams gets the rebound. And they're just getting nothing. But extra pass, corner mule wide open. No. And Geary got it. Sold out here today. The four seniors all started today for UConn, plus Paige Beckers, who will likely get a loud ovation whenever she subs in for her first minutes in the second. This is a long time to set up the play. Yeah, they're really trying to take their time here. And now the shot clock is, is down to nothing. Finally, a shot from Cruz. That's her first made field goal of the game. Probably the one field goal that she's had pretty wide open. They've been really all over her. Oh, what a screen by Nelson Adota, and Williams drills it. Yeah, terrific usage of the screen, I mean, going under it. Let's see if Crooms, after getting her first bucket, gets hot. Instead, the long J for Olsen off, long rebound, won by Providence. Geary. Olsen denied by Nelson Adota, out of bounds, off Providence, Husky ball. And so for the Huskies, the conversation is much bigger than the here and now. This is the seventh ranked team of the country that could be a one seed in the NCAA tournament. Five losses is unheard of for Gino Uriyama. You know, this is a man who has known a 111 game win streak over the course of the last decade. They have been to 13 consecutive Final Fours. Edwards misfires point blank. Yeah, will they get a 14th Final Four? And that's what's on the line here as Cruz drills another one for distance. And for this Husky team, Final Four almost feels like a minimum. You know, the standard here has been outright winning a national title. But off the up fake, draws the foul from Geary. That'll be her fourth. The standard has just been set so high, John, uh, and that's what's incredible. And yet it is so hard to win the way that UConn has won over the years. So we look at this since 2002. I mean, there have been very limited losses over the years, and that is unbelievable. And still look at the success. They lost 7 in 04 05, made the Sweet 16. Lost 4 in 05 06, made the Elite Eight. Lost 4 in 11 12, made the Final Four. Every other year since then, it's been three or fewer losses. Right, exactly. And that's what's, but that's what's incredible about what they've done in this system. They've just. They have an established winning culture, and they've continued to keep that going. Even when they've battled some injuries this season, it hasn't been quite the same. They've still only had five losses. I mean, 
we are so hard on UConn because of what they've done. I mean, it's just, it's going to happen. I mean, the target's on their back. A big picture, I mean, uh, clearly they have now the components they need at the perfect time. So they could be a really scary seed. I wouldn't, you wouldn't want to play them, obviously. <laughs> Crooms ignited this quarter, draws the foul. She'll go to the line. But we'll step aside. Midway through the third, the Huskies are cruising on this senior day. Tomorrow night, 9 Eastern, a men's Mountain West tip off. Wyoming takes on San Diego State. We invite you to watch it here on CBS Sports Network. Two teams that our own Jerry Palm projects to be in to the NCAA tournament, two of four in the Mountain West Conference, Big East, Big Ten, SEC seven each. Now on the women's side, our research team put together their own projections for the NCAA tournament. And they have two women's teams out of the Big East in the big dance. What say you? Well, I think that's that's just not, I think, at least three should get in. Four are, are good enough to get in. I don't like that there's only two being projected, to be honest, from the Big East. I mean, the Big East doesn't get quite enough love, and I think it's an underrated conference. And we look at, the, you know, I talked to Coach Crowley about that and Coach Oriam, and both of them agree that it's a, it's kind of an underrated conference. I mean, UConn clearly is in. I mean, Creighton Marquette, you know, I think could should both be in. Villanova should be in this year. You would have five Big East teams uh, in? Well, I don't know about five. I think realistically three get in, four should get in. Uh, but that's the thing. Uh, you're going to see a team in another conference that's maybe got a 500 record, and they might get in over a really good Big East team. Like DePaul might not get in, and DePaul's a tough team. And Coach Bruno has been incredible as far as a coach. Creighton's in, for sure. But Villanova was missing Maddie Seegers for a whole month or so. That's when they had some of their losses. They should be in, too. Westbrook fouled off the great feed from Here, Beckers. Here's the problem sometimes when teams beat up on each other inside their conference. They think it's not a good thing, but it really is a good thing because you know there's parity in the league as we look at this last foul. As Westbrook, who is a guard, is able to get down to the block. She does a lot, but it should be really interesting. Foul to Megan Herter, her first. Westbrook converts. But Gino Oriema, would we asked him, he really focused more on UConn and said he really wanted to get through the postseason, get through this game today, play the Big East Conference Tournament. For him, he wants to win that conference tournament title. They already have the regular season crown of the one seed. It'll be a, basically a home game at Mohegan Sun Arena. Only about a half hour, 40 minutes from here. Different bracketologists predicting them to be a three seed, which they're scary three seed if that's the case. But yeah, he's focusing on one day at a time. I mean, think about the kind of season that they've had. And suddenly Coons has gotten more into attack mode. Had no main field goals in the first half. She's now the first Friar to double digit points. Give her 11. Oh, and a turnover. Clean pick for Herter. Coons wants the ball. Off the screen from Olsen as a mismatch against Juhas. Up top, Herter. Nice feed to Olsen. And misses. Put back, off target. Rebound to UConn and Duchamp. UConn looking to slow it down here and run some things. Oh, nice feed. What a cut, what a pass. Juhas to Fudd. Beautiful job. You cannot play on Connecticut and not learn how to pass. Is that a different defense? Uh, it looked like a 2-3 potentially. I, I think Coach Oriam is going to throw some different things out there. Great pass, you Haas. Put back. <laughs> to me, Julianne, that's what always puts me in awe every time I watch UConn play. 
they pass the ball so well. It's something clearly taught that they have done generationally in the Gino Oriema era. And even even if you're a big, and he's he's talked about that before to us, that if you are at UConn and you're a big, you don't play unless you pass the ball well. And you think about Adota. That's why she passes well. She had to learn that. Rebecca Lobo. Dolson, Stewie, Tina Charles. I mean, it's, it's just a legacy of terrific passers in the post. Cook turns it over. And again, nice backdoor cut, too. The, the, just the fact that you have the wherewithal to know you're being overplayed. You cannot turn your head. Fudd with a great backdoor. And Kujas finds her. Doesn't matter who's on the floor. And these Huskies have had some tremendous assist games. A breather now for Fudd, the number one recruit in the country. Williams back in. Juhas. Three ball. Off target to Charm. Juhas cleans it up. When UConn started to pull away in the game's infancy, it crashed the glass. That's big, yep. And it has been, since that point, 27 second chance points to Providence's two. And a lot of that is from crashing the glass. Obviously, you get second and third chances. Archibald short, Becker's great feed, Ducharme. Timeout, Providence. Another surge for the Huskies, eighth unanswered, and a huge lead. Two thousand one, two thousand two. Huskies went thirty nine and zero. Tarazi, Bird, Cash, Asia Jones, perhaps the greatest starting five in women's basketball history. It was blowout city every game. Today, the seniors have come to play in twenty twenty two. Senior day, and I would expect nothing less. And Olivia Nelson, the Dota, has been just that dominating force from the start. And you've got to just love the play of. Dorka Juhas, I mean, you name it, everybody on the floor has really been great. Kristen Williams has stepped up her game. It doesn't matter that the score is kind of, it, it's been a blowout, but I mean, you see that? You see the numbers, they don't lie. They don't come to play, and they've kept their foot on the gas. Slowed down a little here in the second half. I mean, they're on pace to 100 something points, I think. Well, it's 51 to 10 at the break. It's only been plus five UConn this quarter, 17 to 12. So Providence has seen Janae Kroom spring to life. UConn hasn't been quite as clean offensively. UConn's got to a zone look as well. Yeah, I mean, right now you can work on a variety of things if you're Gino. Now to Nelson Adota, by the way, her first. Kroom's, oh, nice shake, lost Westbrook, and then sold the foul. That's a pretty creative job there. And that's going to be a foul on Beckers, her first. That's one thing she can do. She can create her own looks, and she's a competitor. And nothing's been easy. Yeah, Jim Crowley put it rather succinctly. We asked him, what does Janae Crooms do for you? And he said, well, she does everything. She handles the ball. She rebounds. She plays for the post. She's physical. She gets downhill. His one tweak. There were times where he said many of his players, including Crooms, they want to win. And sometimes there's a little bit of forcing the action, right. trying to make a play. Did we see that today? I don't think she forced enough in the first half. I think she should have forced more. Uh, but she had a hard time getting any touches in the first half. But I do agree. I mean, that can happen a lot of times, especially as a star player. I mean, wide open there. There's just no defense. I mean, that's been a problem, too. If you can't score with UConn, you are not going to be in games. You see that zone look here again? Yeah, this is a zone. I mean, they're just matching up with zone territory. Working on different things, like I said, typically more man to man oriented team. Westbrook up top, Williams crossing over, Crooms backs her in. Follow, tip ball, controlled by the Friars and Gracie Fosa. Archibald was running the floor. Crooms crossing over. Williams has hounded her all game. 
that can hold for a final look in the quarter. Scott, mid lane, floats it up, off target. Nelson Adota's got it. And a classy move. We'll just let time expire. 70 to 23 as we are through three. UConn and Providence on senior day for the Huskies. You're watching March to March, presented by Principal Financial Group. Let's take a look at our game summary, brought to you by AT&T 5G. What do you see, Jules? Uh, a lot of stuff. I mean, it's a, just very lopsided. Of course, Providence has done a little better here scoring the ball in the second half, but lots of turnovers, and the rebounding battle has just been the killer. UConn has scored second and third chance opportunities, and they've just run, they've just run with it. Coming up next, we head to North Carolina, Men's Southern Conference duel, UNCG meets East Tennessee State on the hardwood right here on CBS Sports Network. Two of the stars that we'll see, Ladarius Brewer, top 10 scorer in the SoCon. Devontae Buckingham has been great for ETSU. And UNCG has the best scoring defense in the SoCon. They only allow 64 points per game. So Providence ball as we begin the fourth quarter. Jumper off target for Naraya Scott. Huskies eyeballing their seventh straight win, their 13th in 14 games. Trying to get to 22 and 5. And go 16 and 1 in the league play. Ducharme kicks, Westbrook, 10 on the timer. Off the block, miss. Loose ball controlled by the Friars. Up the floor, Lauren Sampson wanted the ball. Couldn't find her cleanly. And the Friars are going to be the nine seed of the Big East tournament, barring a miraculous fourth quarter here. And a foul. Let's check in with Jenny for more on the UConn head man. Yeah, that looks like there's actually an injury out on the court, but real quick about that last time out, normally coaches take the entire time to talk to their team, but Gino took about 30 seconds to have that conversation, but he wanted to keep the ball moving more in this last quarter. And it looks like... Hopefully there's not an injury on the court, guys. Appreciate it, Jenny. Nikki Mule looks to be okay. Yeah, that no, certainly need Nikki on the floor you never want to see anyone especially this late in the game go down she's been dealing with a little foot injury that that kept her sideline nearly a month earlier this season she practices about 45 minutes a, a, a practice try to limit her as much as possible in practice so she can use that time during games but to, to Jenny I mean th th this is this is a, a, an important learning time you know you keep playing you got to keep moving the basketball and to, to coach's point there. And a foul. Nelson Nadeau to hit. Is that Baskerville? It's going to be her fifth. And so she is fouled out. And she's only played six minutes. Five fouls and six minutes of action. And that's got to be particularly painful. A young lady who hails from Enfield, Connecticut. Her high school, a 25-mile drive from this building. You know that UConn is a giant part of her background and her family. Painful, painful. Mule, a little short. Oh, and friendly fire there. Naraya Scott got undercut hard by Lauren Sampson looking for the loose basketball, her teammate. Yeah, that's rough. I mean, they were both going after the ball, which you like that anticipation, but that was a hard fall. Well, for UConn this year, Julianne, it's been a lot of first time in a long time. You know, the Huskies are top 10 in the country. They've got 20 wins. They've got a regular season conference title. But they have suffered some down marks, including a conference loss in the regular season. They did not lose a regular season conference game in seven years in the American, when unblemished on their return to the Big East last year. Yeah, they lost to Villanova. They played them really hard. Oh, Westbrook blows by everybody. And Jim Crowley's not happy. His face, the scowl says it all. He builds his teams on defense as he did at St. Bonaventure, as he's done with Providence. Deep three. It's yeah. heel for Fabozzi. And he happens to be facing Connecticut when they're 
at their best here in, in prime time condition. They're playing senior day, I mean, there's just a lot against them, but and his team doesn't seem to be competing much at all. Great seal, spin, and one, Caroline Ducharme. I mean, it is just terrific with the ball move, and you see this is just a, a simple backdoor play, kind of like the flex, a flex cut. I mean, Connecticut just moving the ball well, but in order to do that, you've got to move without the basketball, and, and you see that the players for the Huskies, they never stop moving. They're not stagnant. That's why their offense has such great fluidity to it. Ducharme out to ovation, Edwards back. Will the Huskies be back in a record 14th straight Final Four as Providence rolls the entry? We haven't had a women's Final Four without UConn since 2007, and they lost to LSU in the Elite Eight. But UConn hasn't won a national title since 2016, a series of buzzer-beating moments in the Final Four. Oh, nice no-look idea that got kicked by Samson. So here's all the streaks that concluded during the course of this year. 240 straight wins against unranked teams fell. They lost to two unranked teams in the same season for the first time in nearly two decades. 169-game conference win streak. That's including conference tournaments. Could 13 straight Final Four appearances fall short of 14? Well, when we asked Coach Ariella a week or two ago about whether he thought they were a Final Four team. That was before Beckers came back. He wasn't sure when she was coming back. He said, at the moment, no. <laughs> but he said, but you never know. This year, there's a lot of parity in women's basketball. We could have three or, three or four of the same teams we always see, or we might have four brand new teams in the Final Four, which maybe is a good thing for women's basketball, but he really wasn't sure. I mean, listen, you're never sure when you've got a lot of injuries that you're battling throughout a season until you're you know, but th that's why, I mean, I'm not trying to make excuses for them, but they haven't had the opportunity to all play together. Looks like a good no call, a bit of a tumble. Nelson Adota flat, Olsen's got the board. Crooms falling away. Off iron. Jenny, what do you got? Well, UConn has had eight of its 12 players miss at least two games this year due to, like, illness or injuries. And uh, Avina Westbrook, she was saying, I think it's weird to have so many people back now. We're used to playing with just five or six people. It's a new adjustment, but everyone's figuring out their roles. I think Avina's one of the two that's played in every game, if I'm correct. Uh, she's, there's, like, two players on the team, and she's one of them. And she's, she, so she's played 40 minutes a game sometimes. I mean, <laughs> all of a sudden, your minutes are going to get cut back a little bit. It's going to be to her health. It's not going to be a detriment to her as she comes out of the game here for a much-needed rest. Well, is this her last time subbing out on this floor. Is Gino Oriema allowing those chances for his seniors today? For Westbrook, for Nelson Nadota, who hit the pine. Will Juhas get a similar moment and hear that roar one final time in Stewart's? Double, Double dribble. So here you go. These are, with each individual player, their starts and the number of games they missed. Westbrook and Edwards, the only exceptions right. that played every game. That's it, and everyone else has missed some time. And that's true of most teams in America. And last year, UConn played without a senior and played six freshmen. Olsen hit by Juhas. And they were one of the youngest teams one of the youngest UConn teams in a long time last year. It was the first time they had no seniors since 06-07. That was the last UConn team that failed to make a Final Four. They played six freshmen last year for the first time since 88-89. That was UConn's first Big East regular season and turn of the champion. But you think about the kind of experience that they had last year playing as freshmen. Coach Oriamo was able to play his youngsters and they gained so much experience. So they were ready in their sophomore season. They're they're ready to go. And even the losses they've had this year, it's not such a bad thing that they've had some close games. I mean, that can prepare you for when you've got to play those teams in the NCAA tournament, John. When you think about it, you blow through every single game and you have no close battles. It doesn't always help you. But off the iron tip by Juhas, controlled by Coons. 
And again, Samson was down the floor. That's a play that UConn probably makes. They probably hit that player leaking out. And that's something Providence can grow into. A team that's layered with freshmen of its own as the sophomore Fabozzi converts. Now the Huskies were well on their way to the century mark by the pace of the game at halftime. That has slowed dramatically, and Beckers has been limited. She's passed incredibly well. I think this game, though, is probably different. But you don't judge a lot because it's senior day. Right, it's senior day, and like we said, limited majorly. And they don't want to push her too much. I mean, not if they don't need her. Well, and also, she was assuredly deferential, right? She wants the seniors to have their moment as Fabozzi snaps in the elbow jumper. And she probably gave up looks that she oh, yeah. could or would have converted on or at least attempted. Absolutely. That's where the Big East tournament is basically going to be a proving ground and almost like a mini in-season camp to get ready for the NCAA tournament for the Huskies to redefine who they are with Becker's back. Great point. I mean, it is a practice round for the NCAA tournament, but Big Boat, obviously, they want to win the tournament. But it, it will be one of those things that really counts for something. The, the Big East tournament counts for something. How you're currently playing means something. Yuha's in transition. Well, she's been terrific. And, and there's, she's one of those players that Coach Orima said she can play so well some days and other days you want her to be as aggressive. She's not as aggressive. She needs to continue this kind of play moving forward. If you can get that consistently from her, that's a weapon in postseason. Playground move out of bounds. And they're going to call a foul here. Push foul. And Dorka Juhas certainly doesn't care what the score is. She's been knocking him down from all over. Drains that three. You're watching March to March, presented by Principal Financial Group on CBS Sports Network. Julianne, let's take a look once more at your keys to the game, brought to you by Daisy Cottage Cheese. Clearly all UConn centric here. I mean, the game was sped up. They forced 15 turnovers, and they didn't, it, Paige did not play enough to really get that involved. They, they got so far ahead that they don't even really need her today, but she certainly has gotten involved when she's been in the ball game. Now keep in mind, part of the pedigree and the problem if you're a UConn Husky, is winning championships. The 08 seniors were the first class to not win a title since 1999. 2020, those seniors didn't have an NCAA tournament in their senior year. They couldn't win one. The seniors of 2022 have not won the national championship. UConn's been to 13 straight Final Fours. Final Fours, they've been in the national semifinals. But it's been since 2016 to lift the championship trophy. That's the standard here. Gino Oriyama is undefeated in title games. He's 11-0 in the national championship. What does that mean for these players trying to hang the first banner since 2016? Listen, you come here and you know the pressure is on, and they feel that. They know that. They come here expecting a title, and you know that the players want it more than anything, right? I mean, I can speak from a player's perspective, and, yeah, these, these seniors want it, and so that's got to be a driving force for them, of course, and... They can't allow that pressure, though, to, to, to be a bad thing. You've got to allow it to be a good thing for you. But that's the expectation here when you go to UConn. And, and like we've been talking about the last couple of years of their career, have been tough. And here's the last chance for Dorka Juhas and Kristen Williams to sub out. Juhas could be back next year. They go deeper to the bench. Amari DeBerry getting her first minutes. and. A fond farewell and an ovation for Williams, who was sensational today. She was terrific. But you think about what they've been through. I mean, I put myself in their shoes, and I just, I'm glad I was not in college playing during this COVID era and the last couple of seasons. It just, it really put a damper on all things sports. So, unfortunately, that's been a, something they've had to overcome. Williams a game by 16 points, four made threes, five boards, and perhaps even more so, the defense that she delivered on Janae Crooms did not allow her a field goal, one point in the entire first half as Crooms turns it over on steps. She was outstanding. Yeah, I mean, she is 
Listen, the number one recruit of the class of 2018 was Kristen Williams. I mean, they knew that she was a special freshman when she came in. She dropped 28 points against then number one Notre Dame. Remember that on game? the road. On the road. Yeah. I, would, I mean, I'm going to always talk about that game because when I saw her play, I was like, wow, she's the real deal. Backdoor cut, <laughs> back to the basket, reverse for fun. And the feed from the freshman to Berry off the bench. Piaf Gabriel is also in. Shot try off for Geary. Olsen tied up. Jump ball with Bud. Well, the Huskies have it. Is this UConn team a championship team this year? It's a really good question, John. <laughs> I think they're capable. I think that they are capable because they've got Paige Becker's back. I think that's been, if she was not back, I would say I don't think they're going to win a national championship this year. I don't think they would win without her. I think if she is full force and they all stay healthy moving forward, that they can win. It's anybody's game. But it's not going to be an easy thing. How, how do you think they would rematch with South Carolina? They fell to Dawn Staley's team 73-57, but that was in the later stage of November. I think that they will fare better with the Beckers because they've gotten better. Well, Beckers did play. I mean, Beckers well, didn't get hurt until the next right. week. She did, she did play. But I think they've gotten better since then in a variety of other ways. Other players have gotten better, and they've, they've got. But so has South Carolina. So that's where the question mark will be. I think South Carolina is more athletic, and clearly they have played terrific this season. They certainly can beat them. But it's going to be tough. Babozi off. But nobody, nobody's talking about Stanford either. I mean, we think about Stanford and what they did last year. They won the title last year, but, but there's never a lot of talk about them, which is kind of interesting. And Tara Vanderveer just continue, continuously produces these programs that are incredible. And because they don't have somebody who averages 25 a game, they're just a very solid team. These are some of the projections. Now, what stands out to me, I'm curious your take. Gino Oriema alluded to this when we spoke to him. Look where UConn is, according to our research team at Greensboro, not in Bridgeport. Right, which the, is... The de facto home game that has often happened over the years for programs. I, I can think of when Gonzaga was an 11 seed and played at home in the NCAA tournament. I saw a recent one where he's in Bridgeport again. So it's changed four or five times, and, and he told us, I don't know if anyone knows what they're talking about <laughs> at this point, he told us before the game. They've been in four or five different regions in the projections. But I do like them in Bridgeport because you're going to bring a lot of fans. And these are the last four in, first four out. Villanova, according to our research team, and DePaul among the first four out. Now that could be influenced heavily by the Big East Conference Tournament. A lot will. That's, that's what you need to always keep in mind, how you're currently playing matters so the Big East tournament and how you play and how you finish in that tournament do you get knocked off out in the quarterfinals or in the quarter round in the, in the first round I mean how do you do 13-0 run for UConn closing well after a sluggish showing to pieces of the third and fourth quarter and they're settling back in the zone look again it appears yeah it's a 2-3 they've been in this for a while here working on it and they may need to toss this up teams in the future, so might as well practice it now. Oh my goodness, that caught our <laughs> official right in the face. Good, good anticipation. <laughs> Ryan Durham, <laughs> thankfully like, ah. it looks like he's smiling under there and he's all right. <laughs> Protect yourself at all times. At least I moved my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, the coffee did take a tumble of its own earlier. <laughs> it was ice though, so. Not as bad. <laughs> Bozzi off target. Man, what a box out by Edwards. So timer off. And the Huskies can dribble out the waning seconds. The tradition here is they stand and clap before the first points. They do that every game in this final home game. They stand and applaud one final time for UConn seniors. The Huskies blow out Providence as Gino Oriema and UConn 
conclude their regular year with 22 wins. They will enter the Big East Conference Tournament as the one seed that was secured on Wednesday. They are the regular season conference champs. We know that Providence will now be the nine. Providence had to win and needed Xavier to lose twice. That cannot happen, so the Friars will be the nine seed. Now, I mean, an outstanding performance from UConn. I mean, it's what you would expect from them on a senior day situation. I mean, anyone facing them today really had it out for them, but terrific performance and, and a way to finish strong. You, you always want to finish strong heading into postseason play, heading into the Big East Conference Tournament. And so a game that began with a lot of pomp and circumstance, pregame ceremony, this Husky team that saw tears, juxtaposed with smiles, it concludes with pure happiness and an 88 to 31 thumping for UConn as we go to Jenny Dell with the victorious head man, Gino Oriema. All right, Coach, did you feel the emotions of senior day in this one? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's always different. Uh, you know, some of the kids try to play it off, you know, like it's no big deal. And uh, you can, some, some kids are really affected by it a lot. And, uh, you know, and the game always starts a little bit on eggshells, you know, but uh, uh, I'm just glad that, um, you know, they all played well and um, they got into the flow of it. And uh, uh, it's a fun day for them, and that's what it should be. Over a 50-point victory here. You get Paige back. What do you take away from this game as a whole? Uh, you know, I tell them it's the same thing we saw the other night against uh, St. John's. You know, when, when our defense is at a certain level and we're playing a certain way uh, and we get rolling on offense, our transitioning is really, really good. Um, and then it just kind of feeds off each other. You know, everybody that touches the ball starts to score and uh, that's when we're at our best. And, um, you know, uh, second half, you know, once we try to slow it down a little bit and be more half court, not as great. But uh, now that we have everybody, it's... Uh, People don't feel like they're, um, you know, they're going to play 40 minutes. So they go as hard as they can for as long as they can, and, and you can see the difference. Get everyone back at the right time. And speaking yeah. of that, moving forward, we got the Big Ace Championship coming up. We got, you know, NCAA tournament coming up. What do you think is the ceiling for this team? I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's, it's interesting because, um, you know, we haven't played together for so long. Um, and we probably need like a really, really good uh, hard fought game, you know, to see exactly where we stand. So my guess is like after the Big East tournament, I think after those three days, um, we'll have a pretty good idea. But, you know, UConn teams tend to play pretty well in the postseason. So, you know, I feel pretty good about where we are. You have had some success there. Yeah. Coach. Congratulations yeah, on yeah, a great we've one got, here today. We've gotten it right a bunch of times. Yes, you have. Congrats. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate it. And then the victorious head man for UConn and Gino Oriema as they close the year with a convincing win on senior day over Providence. That'll put a bow on things for Julianne Viani, Jenny Dell, our entire CBS crew. I'm John Sadak. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. The tears flowed, the buckets drained. Kristen Williams and company, brilliant, and more to come with a Big East tournament looming. We send it now to our New York studio. So long from Stores, Connecticut.